This is an incredible story. The story that most of you people know that went before it, it was uh, incredible, where a company started in 1936 in the depths of the Depression and then found a mine in 1944 and actually put it into production, uh, only to have that end in a lawsuit and the loss of the company's asset uh, that you had invested in. Then uh, the company continued, limped along for a number of years, and we uh, found uh, each other. Uh, my family investment company uh, was able to buy a block of stock to take control of McDonald Mines. That happened in February of 1993, uh, and just weeks before that uh, closing took place, I had been introduced to Michael Cohen. Michael is a collector of fine art and antiques, and he had understood that Cuba, uh, which many years ago was one of the wealthiest places in the world, had a lot of fine art and antiques, and so he'd been traveling there for about seven or eight years when I met him. And uh, when he was introduced to me and understood my background in mining exploration, he insisted that I come down to Cuba and look at the opportunities there. Up till that point, I hadn't any interest in Cuba. It was, uh, I knew nothing about it. I knew there had been a revolution. I knew that Fidel Castro uh, always wore army fatigues, and that's about the extent of what I knew about it. However, um, Michael then persuaded me to accompany him on our, our first uh, visit, joint visit to Cuba, which uh, I think we went in at the end of March of 93. And uh, he was able, through the uh, friends that he had made in Havana, uh, able to introduce uh, McDonald Mines to uh, the people at the Ministry of Basic Industries. Cuban political leadership has realized that they must reintegrate into the international trading community. Um, frankly, they have no choice. Even if they didn't want to, <laughs> they have to. And I think there's a broad consensus in the in the uh, in the political leadership here that 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 this is a um, um, a, a necessary step for Cuba. As part of that process, they have uh, been liberalizing their uh, their uh, economic structures. Um, opening the country uh, increasingly to foreign investment. They passed a foreign investment law last September which makes the investment process much more transparent, protects the rights of the investors uh, as had not been done in the past. And I think these were positive steps. Uh, Cuba is in my view, at least this is what I, they, they tell me, and I, from what I see looking around, is a, com is a country open for business. About five years ago, I was working in Northern Ontario on a new mineral discovery, a nickel discovery, which of course is a very important commodity here in Cuba. Myself and a prospect were, were sitting thinking, by God, I'll bet you Cuba would be a great place to go and look at. It's, it's, got a, it's, got, it's a big country, has a lot of natural resources. Nobody knows anything about it because it's been virtually closed for 30 years. So we decided it would be one of the, a great prospecting venture. So we, we got ourselves organized and went down with a, a group of politicians and businessmen who had been working in Cuba for about five years. We got a very high level introduction to people in Havana. We immediately uh, discovered what we had found with our research, and that was that this was a very intelligent, well-educated workforce. Uh, the country had many geologists, a lot of natural possi resource possibilities and we sat down and we started to negotiate and about one year later we actually had a working agreement and uh, now there's been tens of millions of dollars in investment relating to our mining activity in Cuba and uh, it seems to be growing and it's been very successful. 
Canada is Cuba's number one trading partner. I don't want to brag or anything, but we, sur we, we surpassed Spain uh, just a, a few months ago. We are Cuba's number one trading partner. I think we are their, their uh, uh, principal commercial partner in general. They trust us. We have a proven track record. Canadian businessmen don't talk a lot. They just deliver the goods. What hole are we on right now? This one here? No. In this moment? We're here. Ten. That's one of the earlier, earliest holes we drilled yeah. here. These two holes uh, were drilled uh, about a month ago. We had uh, a very decent intersection here, 
And this hole uh, looks like it's continuous mineralization right to the bottom that will average uh, a couple grams. It's, uh, it's a very, very good intersection. I guess we'll have to uh, step back here and put a couple long holes in, into this thing. These numbers are to the bottom of this hole. We're, uh, we're into the gravy. Um, the un one of the unusual facets that we're just starting to come to terms with this morning, I think, is, is the fact that um, it's been subjected to tropical weathering in, a, in, a, in an environment that undergoes relatively little erosion. So that's what we call a, a lateritic weathering environment. It's precisely that environment that gave the large deposits of nickel here in, uh, in the northern part of Cuba, not far, in fact, from, from where we are now. And the mineralization here has been subjected to that same type of uh, lateritic weathering. And that's apparently, at least in parts of the deposit, um, resulted in some very spectacular concentration of gold um, at the base of the weathering profile. And uh, it, it, it remains a possibility, I think, that uh, what we're seeing is um, some of the most obvious mineralization sticking above the ground. Um, and. Uh, constituting the low hills on the property and the surrounding soil covered plains um, at least at this current stage of understanding could be concealing um, uh, comparable bodies and let's keep our fingers crossed that some of those might even have better grade we don't know yet. The need for capital is uh, obvious and uh, the other obvious thing is that Americans cannot employ uh, their capital there in while the economic embargo continues. So you have a situation where a country has opened itself up to foreign investment. It's been closed to foreign investment for 36 years, and the Americans can't compete with you. Uh, Canada, on the other hand, has a history of uh, expertise, uh, well, both a history and an expertise in primary industry, in particular mining uh, minerals and uh, hydrocarbons, oil business. So we thought, well, having made the decision that uh, we should completely focus the efforts of McDonald Mines Exploration Limited only on Cuba and only in gold uh, to keep it simple for the, uh, for the financial markets, um, we thought uh, that it would be, uh, would make sense to, to replicate uh, that and use the same uh, formula in the area of uh, the other significant opportunity which was apparent, which is exploration for oil. In Cuba, we have all the condition to hope find great oil fields because we have the same source rock that exists in the south part of Mexico or in Venezuela. We are very encouraging regarding the cooperation with Canadian companies and I feel that uh, for the shareholders of different Canadian companies it's a great opportunity to do business here in Cuba, to invest in our country in order to obtain, of course, benefits. Whatever else this revolution accomplished, um, I think that for the last 35 or 36 years, the savings of the nation have been invested in the capital of the people. They are uh, unique in the Caribbean. They have a Latin uh, history and culture and temperament, but they, they are Anglo uh, in terms of their vigor and their rigor and their outlook. Uh, as a consequence of the policies adopted after the success of the revolution, uh, they have universal health care, dental care, education, uh, something exceeding 99% literacy. Uh, it is an incredibly highly educated uh, population, highly motivated, um, and uh, tremendously skilled so that we can go there with uh, uh, everything that uh, we've been able to accumulate and learn 
here in the sciences and find very, very capable and willing students and partners. I think one of the aspects of Helms Burton is almost more important uh, than what, uh, almost more important than what's actually in the bill from a legal point of view is the perception, public perception of what the bill says, which is that any Canadian company who does business with Cuba cannot do business in the United States, and that's just not true. The bill doesn't say that, but we have a perception issue here, and I think it will take time for this to sort itself out. It'll take time. There are a number of unanswered questions. It'll take time uh, for the administration, for example, to decide how they're going to implement the bill, and they have a range of options. Uh, it will take time uh, uh, to interpret the bill, or the law, um, as American courts will, 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 will have to do. The international community from our own contacts, and as you know, Canada is, is in the lead in terms of, of opposition to Helms-Burton because of our very serious concerns about extraterritorial application of American domestic trade law, which is unacceptable to Canadians. It always has been. We, in fact, as, as you probably know, have a domestic law in Canada uh, with a big, long legal name, uh, the Foreign Extraterritorial Measures Act which 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 is in direct response to extraterritorial application of American law. We don't accept that. We never have, we, and the Americans know this. Um, but we also have serious concerns about, about violations, what we believe to be violations in the Helms-Burton law of international trade law and practice and the obligations of the United States in international in a liberalized global trading system. The, the Golden Hill discovery that we're currently working on and is uh, causing a lot of excitement for our shareholders and in fact for the stock markets is, uh, is one discovery but we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the region that uh, we are exploring, the 2,000 square kilometer Florencia Hobabo region uh, is now being understood by the many uh, Canadian and, and uh, uh, other geologists that we've introduced to it to host a lot of potential uh, discoveries we have four high priority targets in the concession in addition to the Golden Hill discovery area uh, Palo Seco, Tres Casas, uh, Senco Lotes um, amongst them and uh, we'll be uh, drilling those, drill testing those targets and doing initial reconnaissance work on them in the upcoming year. It's uh, highly likely also that we may have uh, a SCARN uh, a world, the potential for a world-class SCARN deposit at the Maclama uh, target area. There's been mining in that area in, in a number of uh, campaigns over the centuries. Uh, the last, I think, finished in the 1930s. And uh, this, too, is a kind of deposit which is now much more completely understood than any time in the past. And we'll be doing exploration work there in the, in the coming 12 months. So uh, Golden Hill may prove to be uh, something uh, significant, but uh, there's lots of further potential in our mineral concession in Cuba for uh, a number of other discoveries. Uh, we created two other companies, McDonald Oil Exploration Limited and McDonald Trading Corporation, and then we dividended the shares of those uh, completely to the existing shareholders so that uh, you all became shareholders, received dividends of share certificates in each of those two companies.